Hi, this is Saulo Bookseller and I want to talk today about shaggy dog stories or just dog stories. I may even talk about shaggy god stories, which are the kind of science fiction stories which end up with a protagonist um, in a post-nuclear or post-apocalyptic situation ending up as the new Adam or something like that. But really what I want to talk about is Scott Bradfield. Um, and I've just read Dazzle Resplendent. So this is kind of review, but there'll be some... Um, sort of sidebars about doggy books and things like that. Well, why do I like doggy books? Do I read a lot of doggy books? Have I read a lot of dog books? I've read my share, you know, I've read um, Call of the Wild and White, White Fang, which I think are brilliant, powerful. I don't think they're children's books. I think as, um, you know, um, depictions of nature's cruelty and indifference, they're pretty much, um, you know, unassailable. They're just brilliant. So you should read them in that way. You know, London was, of course, um, during his lifetime, the highest paid writer in the world. So, you know, go back to them. If you think they're kids' books, you haven't read them, do read them. Um, so, yeah, Dazzle Resplendent. Scott Branfield is an American short story writer, novelist, um, creative writing tutor, all-round good guy and very funny chap. And I first came across Scott's work in the sort of late 80s when he was published in things like Interzone and Other Edens because I'm a science fiction fan. I first read him there. But he's a bit broader than that. He's done all sorts of things. And um, he has this fantastic fantastic YouTube channel, um, Scott Bradfield, where he describes himself as the master bather. Um, it's all about reading books in the bathtub, um, which I never do. I never read books in the bath. I love my books too much, but um, it's kind of a, a sort of joke thing. It's about sort of reading just for the sake of it, but pointlessly, you know, and just reading what you fancy reading. And that's the best way, really. And what I like about Scott as a reader um, and as a writer is he does what he likes, you know, and he... Um, He's not bothered about things where there's genre or literature and, um, you know, he's he's really sort of you know wide ranging and I really like that. And um, this is, um, I say, Dazzle Resplendent, which is a collection of linked short stories forming into a novel, what we used to call a fix up in SF circles. And um, I got this from um, Amazon recently because it's sort of kind of print on demand thing. And I'm going to do a review of it. But first, I'm going to talk a bit more about dog books. And just thought I'd pull a few together because I love dogs. I don't have one. I haven't owned a dog um, since I lived at home with my parents. And I just seem to have sort of like ended up with loads of cats. And um, I would pick up my literary cat, Smudge, if she was here. And of course, she's not because they're never there when you want them. On Scott's channel, his dog, Lucky, who has an amazing underbite, um, pops up very regularly. He's also got a budgery guard, what he calls a parakeet, called Dodo as well. And, um, you know, it, it, his channel's are a real inspiration to me. I've mentioned him a few times. People who watch the channel regularly will have, will have noticed that. So thanks, Scott, for inspiring me, because it, it was Scott's approach, which is rather ramshackle and straightforward and direct, but all about the real love of books that inspired me to start my channel. So thanks, Scott, for that. And um, look at some doggy books. Well, this is a dog book I read <clears throat> a while ago, which I didn't like. Um, and this is Ron Goulart's The Tin Angel. I said I didn't like it. I didn't actually finish it. It's a door book. It's got a little dog doing a song and dance routine there with a straw hat and cane on the cover. And it's got a talking dog in it. And I didn't get very far with it. I, I, I felt it was rather cluttered but maybe I'll go back to it. I like the covers so I'll probably hang on to it but I'm glad that I didn't buy I was going to buy an expensive hardcover first I'm glad I didn't because um, I think this has got a nicer cover anyway so so I wasn't that fussed on that I normally talk about books I like but I'm just gonna say that didn't really grab me and <clears throat> a couple of years ago I read The Incredible Journey which everybody knows there's a film or several film versions of by um, Sheila Burford and this is really good on natural history and it's about um you know, this family goes on holiday and they leave their two dogs and their cat with somebody who's going to look after them. But, you know, the animals don't understand that. They don't know that their owners are going to come back. So they go off on this trek, you know, across North America. And um, it's great stuff. I really enjoyed it. It's um, beautifully written. And I don't normally read children's books, so that was fun. Probably my favourite dog book of recent years is a non-fiction book. There have been other books on this subject published since, and I think this came out about 2014-15. And this is the very wonderful Soviet Space Dogs, um, published by Fuel, who specialise in books on Soviet iconography. Um, you know, their book on Soviet bus stations is really something. And I'm gonna, you think I'm joking, but it's it's brilliant. Soviet bus stations and this Soviet bus stations too, which isn't so good. But I'll show you that on the channel at some point. It's fantastic and.
this is a lovely little hardcover book as you see and it's all about Leica and Stroka and Belka and those little doggies who went into space in the early days of the Russian space program and um, every single page has illustrations and it's absolutely fantastic I really really love it and what you realize is that the Soviet authorities marketed or propagandized the Soviet space dogs across all sorts of things in the Soviet Union on biscuit tins, sweet wrappers, what have you. They sort of promoted them as folk heroes for kids and what have you. And um, all across the Soviet Union in exactly the same way um, that the Americans would have done as well. This is just amazing. So, you know, the two sort of capitalist and socialist systems weren't that different. It's a lovely book. Do pick it up. There are other books out there on this subject, but they're nowhere near as good. And of course, it's quite sad at parts as well, because, you know, you discover what actually happened. And it's absolutely wonderful. So it does tear jerk, but it's marvellous. Um, if I were going to write a book on the same subject, if I'd written this, I would have called it If the Stars Were Dogs referencing um, the Gregory Benford and Gordon Eklund novel, If the Stars Were Gods. And um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. So that's great. So I'm supposed to be talking about Scott Bradfield, but I, I've, I've sort of rambled off. So sorry, sorry to anybody who um, feels they've been misled. I'm going to mention one more dog book, The Great Timbuk Two by Paul Auster here in a UK Faber first edition. A um, bit of spine fade there. I need to cover this. And this is great as well. This was probably for me one of Auster's last really good books. After this, um, the Book of Illusion of Brooklyn Follies were really good, uh, but I really think he's gone off the boil ever since. Shame, because like for 15 years, 20 years, he was like the best writer in America, in my opinion. So there we go. So Timbuktu, if you've never read it and you like Auster, do, because it is really good. So Dazzle Resplendent. Well, um, what can I say? This is a really funny book. Um, Dazzle is a um, misanthropic dog who um, you know, really has issues and Dazzle is self-aware. And this reminds me in a way of the work of John Sladek, who I know Scott was a fan of, who's a sort of satirical science fiction American um, SF writer who spent some time in London in the late 60s, part of the whole Moorcock axis of New Worlds and what have you. And he did some great books, um, some very witty, funny things. And he was good at imitating other writers' styles. And Sladek um, is somebody that um, Scott um, admires, I know. It also reminds me of Thomas M. Dish um, in his sort of blacker aspects and the sort of black wit of Dish. And again, I know Scott was a huge fan of Tom Dish. And I guess you'd like this if you like Kurt Vonnegut as well, though it lacks the kind of old fartisms which rather mar his work. I mean, I like Vonnegut and I like the early work particularly. All the early SF work is brilliant but you can have too much of a good thing with Vonnegut and his writing gets very sloppy later on and I've read more or less all his books and um, I've read I think all of them pretty much twice and I went back to him a few years ago and, and I read too many at once and it was just wasn't wasn't great so read them sparingly so in this one Dazzle Lamb is this dog and um, he has all sorts of issues with other dogs and he finds them frustrating and um, he um, he sort of <laughs> Uh, you know, he, he has all sorts of fun. And what can I say about this? You know, he, he gets involved with a female dog, unfortunately he gets castrated at some point. Um, and he's involved with this female dog and they live out in the wilderness and um, she's got pups and he's trying to teach them, you know, what rhomboids are and the meaning of ge geometrical sort of things and stuff. <laughs> it's, and you really do feel for him. It's, it's very funny. And it's really about the American dream and how everything's dumbed down um, in our culture. Not just American culture, but Western culture per se. And how, you know, Darcy wants to see things raised up. And um, as I say, it's a collection of short stories, really. This is a wonder, wonderful one where Dazzle goes to find his dad, um, which is where he gets his brains from, and um, or so his dad says. And his dad, there's a wonderful bit where there's a reference to um, Diogenes, the cynic, the cynic philosopher. And of course, the cynics um, were philosophers who were um, pretty early on in um, the sort of classic era of Greece. They're amongst the first school of philosophers. And cynic, of course, drives from Cane, the dog, um, canine and um, there's a wonderful part where Dazzle's dad tells him to get out of his light and that is what um, Diogenes said to um, a king at the time you know because um, the theory is Diogenes lived in you know like a tub or something a barrel and the king went to see him and why said wise man what do you want and he said I need to just get out of my light that would be enough so so that sort of sums up cynicism and um, 
that's a great little reference you know and that's the sort of thing that scott's good at he dropped these things these things in lightly and he doesn't tell them to you about them but they're there you know and Dazzle has all sorts of adventures he ends up um going to the pound at one point and um sort of he ends up in this experimental situation where people can understand what he's saying and, and he's woofing but they can actually understand what he's saying and he ends up then there's a great, great part entitled um Dazzle joins the Screenlight Writers Guild, which is undoubtedly, you know, references, experiences that various writers have had when they've been picked up by Hollywood to write scripts or to have their books, you know, turned into, into sort of films with, you know, terrifying results for the writer. And um, Dazzle's life story gets sold and what have you. And there's a wonderful part where he goes into space at the end. So there's a science fiction element. And some of this appeared in, let's just have a look um let's just see it does say here somewhere um various parts appeared in other edens into zone i can't find the acknowledgements now they here they are. oh hang on a second here we go these stories originally appeared in other edens 2 the magazine of fantasy and science fiction fence newer rauschunda obviously some german thing maybe, and the baffler <laughs> sounds good doesn't it the baffler so um <laughs> there's an epigraph from nietzsche here begin the book our understanding of ourselves goes from bad to worse and one thing scott is really brilliant at is crackling dialogue that's really funny and i laughed out loud several times during this and um it is cynical it is like that living like a dog with scott so you know great sort of characters and sketches and what have you um but you know scott really does have genius for comic dialogue I, I really sort of admire it it's fantastic and you know you can tell the sort of the sort of way he was thinking you know because um he dedicates the book to bernie sanders ralph nader noam chomsky democracy spring brand new congress and the best of their species and um you know as i say he's not po faced either about his literary taste i mean he he wrote um a book called um why i hate tony morrison's beloved and you know about years of wasted reading <laughs> and that instantly endeared me to him because um you know i i hate tony morrison's beloved as well i just think it was the clunkiest thing i mean to me stylistically oh god i couldn't get more than a few pages through it. it's just terrible in my view and it's held up you know as this paragon i'm sure lots of people hate me for saying it but i really didn't like it at all i this is more fun um and probably says more about the human condition but in a sort of indirect way again i probably really upset people now by saying that so if you do like tony morrison i do apologize but i just couldn't see it for a writer who's so acclaimed his style in those opening pages oh, it's just really really awful uh, but you know scott's had lots of acclaim from people like brian moore mary gateskill jonathan lethem tobias wolf um you know michael chabon great stuff you know and uh, my partner's really a mary gateskill at the moment i'm going to read one soon brian moore very interesting writer jonathan lethem really good slipstream writer you know he's science fiction writer really if you ask me um tobias wolf tobias wolf once came to a bookshop i worked in and did an afternoon reading from um, I think it was This Boy's Life and it was fantastic, really good, you know. So I really recommend this. So you can get it online on Amazon. You probably won't come across it in bookshops. It's really funny. You laugh a lot. Um, it's great satirical writing, great characterization and that snappy dialogue. So there's a few dog books. Um, I'm looking forward to reading more of Scott's work. I have read a couple of collections of short stories. Um, I must get around to reading his first novel, um, Story of Luminous Motion, which I've not um, not come across. And, and I neglected him for decades. You know, I read his stuff early on and I went back to him after seeing his channel and thinking, oh yeah, I remember. And got out my copy of his first short story collection, which was published by Unwin. And I've had great fun with this. So um, thanks, Scott, for inspiring me with your channel and for your wonderful talks of all sorts of books. And anybody who loves books, you really must subscribe to his channel. And, um, you know, he, he comes up with the most fantastic analysis. And sometimes he's just really ramshackle and I love it. You know, I love it when a professional is quite happy to be unprofessional in presentation because what counts is content anybody these days can do flash presentation if they've got the resources but content is what what really counts and um, there's lots of content in this so this is outlaw bookseller signing out with this review of dazzle resplendent by scott bradfield bye for now